From the nonpartisan Maddie Institute and the California Channel of the State Capitol, this is a Maddie Policy Brief. Welcome. Over the last decade, California has led the nation in enacting laws dealing with climate change. Our guest is the author behind that legislation, Senator Fran Pavley from Los Angeles. Welcome. Thank you very much. So you've been called the pioneer of climate change, uh, climate change movement. You've authored laws on reducing vehicle emissions in 2002, uh, landmark 2006 legislation, AB 32 that required the reduction of greenhouse gases to 1990 levels by 2020, right. and then most recently, 2016 legislation, SB 32 that cut emissions to 40% below 1990 levels by 2030. That's a lot of legislation. Why did you pick this particular area of public policy to focus on? Well, I think it, became, it was because of my background. I grew up in the San Fernando Valley during those horrible smoggy days where I remember as a child not being able to go recess. And the main contributor was cars. Cars cause smog. Smog is unhealthy. Then, fast forward, I went to Fresno State. <laughs> uh, also has problems with air pollution and it affects children's health. So that's been my passion and interest in tying vehicle emissions and there's a direct link between criteria air pollutants and climate change. Yeah, my, my brother lived in Los Angeles during the uh, late 70s, early 80s, and I remember him telling me you couldn't see downtown. It was, so, it was so polluted, but things have improved pretty dramatically since then. So AB 32, considered groundbreaking legislation in 2006, was the state's first major piece of climate change legislation. Former Governor Schwarzenegger, I can't say it in his voice, uh, but he called it the most powerful environmental law, period. Um, what were the major provisions of AB 32? Well, I think the three that resonate with the public the most was the tailpipe emission bill that you referenced, and that's making our car, all cars more fuel efficient, giving customers a broader choice of vehicles. That's why you see in the road now traditional vehicles, but also those hybrids or electric cars mm -hmm. or hydrogen fuel cell. And so that's part of it. Um, also part of it is really investing in energy efficiency. That's sort of the low-hanging fruit. That's where you can get the most greenhouse gas emissions reductions for the least cost. So energy efficiency appliances. It was very controversial to put an appliance standard on refrigerators. Mm -hmm. Who knew? And now, and they said it would be too expensive. Other states wouldn't want California's model. Now other states all want California's model on energy efficient uh, refrigerators. And it's saving homeowners money on right. their energy bill. Right. Um, you know, instead of mandating regulations, so AB 32 had something kind of interesting. They established something called cap and trade. Um, can you briefly describe California's cap and trade program? Um, do we have a few hours? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Um, a cap means what it does. We, first of all, put a cap on emissions and we're rolling them back to 1990 levels of reduction. That's the market signal we want to send. Now, we could have done that through a straight regulatory approach. All this is kind of a mandated, you do All this. major polluters, right, mm -hmm. would have to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Or we can say, yes, if you're a major polluter and you can't reduce those emissions, it's not cost effective, there's a different approach. You can then purchase what's called allowances so that the government can invest in greenhouse gas emission reductions maybe somewhere else. Could be by providing rebates to middle class vehicle drivers in their new cars or energy efficiency in someone's homes. So it was a way to either be mandated strictly through command and control, regulated to reduce your emissions, or if you cannot, for whatever reason, it's not cost effective, it's not technologically feasible, you can sort of what I call pay to pollute. Contribute money into this account that will be expended thoughtfully around the state of California for the express purpose of redoing, reducing greenhouse gas well, The emissions. idea behind cap trade was kind of interesting is you let companies and individuals be creative as to how they're going to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions as opposed to telling them this is what you have to do. So it, all that creativity comes out and you find more effective ways to deal with the problem. And, and the businesses wanted this. This concept of cap and trade came from the business community, not just California businesses, but national businesses. Well, let me ask you, it's been 10 years since AB 32 became law. Has it accomplished what you had hoped it would accomplish? In almost every category, absolutely. What we look at overall, how we reduce greenhouse gas emissions, can we quantify that? Yes, we can. They've reduced considerably. We will meet our 2020 targets. 
and uh, has it been done in a cost-effective manner? Has our economy improved while we've been reducing emissions? Yes, it's substantially improved over the last 20 years, despite the recession. Um, so it hasn't hurt the economy like some people feared? It not only hasn't hurt the economy, it's sent that market signal to new businesses to invest in places, even like Fresno. Um, we are seeing a variety of solar companies come into Fresno, but areas all over the state where they're being profitable, and they say it's because of our policies, not in spite of our policies, but because of them. Well, let me ask you this. Um, PPIC had a survey that shows that the partisan divide on climate change has gotten even greater since 2006, since AB 32 was passed. Why is that? I would lay some of the blame on Washington, D.C. Um, I'm not sure why everything has to be so partisan back there. Uh, I'll tell you, in 2002, I was getting support letters on my tailpipe emission bill from John McCain and Republicans. Uh, we had Republican Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger signing AB 32. We've always had a few brave Republican legislators um, vote for these bills, renewable energy standards, et cetera, et cetera. So I think it's because of powerful special interest money. It's hard. Sometimes transition is hard. And as we change from an economy based on fossil fuels like coal and oil to a new cleaner energy future, um, some people don't want that transition and they don't want that change and they're using their lobbying power to affect and just, it just could be that the partisan nature of politics on many topics is just, this is one of the topics that it's uh, been become very highly partisan. But anyway, I, I appreciate the background on the state's climate change legislation. For a more in-depth analysis of this and other public policy issues important to Californians, please log on to our website at maddieinstitute.org and click on the Policy Analysis tab.